With the news of Tokyo 2020 being postponed until 2021, we know that this has impacted the sports community and athletes. Today, we're talking to Erica Weeb. She's a Canadian Olympic gold medalist in wrestling, and she joins me now. Thanks for talking to us. It's an honor to be here with you. So first of all, I, I always ask everybody on a personal level, how are you doing? Oh, well, you know, it's been an absolute roller coaster. Um, it's been, you know, just over, um, just under 48 hours since the athletes received word that Canada was not sending a team to Tokyo 2020 if it went forward. Um, and then we had the official announcement by the IOC that the games will be postponed for one year. And uh, so it's like, it's a lot of uncertainties. It's a lot of adjustments. And uh, I'm just trying to roll and stay calm throughout this crisis. So before you got the news, were you training um, and, and were you in the mindset to, I'm training and this is happening and I'm, I'm going to the Olympics in July? Yeah, so I had actually just qualified for the Games on March 14th, so just over 10 days ago. And so I qualified and I was in a rest period, a you know, two-week prescribed rest period to allow my body to heal, to recover, so that I would be able to get into the, the big loading phase leading into the Games. So I haven't been training this past week. I haven't been able to if I wanted to. All the facilities are closed. Um, you know, everything's shutting down. I, I'm in self-isolation. And I was though preparing for what training would look like if I were to still continue to go to the games and you know wrestling it's a very physically intimate sport and I was preparing like to think about you know if I am not able to wrestle before I head to the Olympics like will I be ready and you know I think as athletes we're conditioned to manage uncertainties to manage these huge massive challenges and I knew that no matter what I would be ready I was extremely optimistic but um, now I'll have a little bit more time to get prepared. And how did you feel with, um, you know, the decision coming from the IOC that, you know, we're, they are going to postpone it? I know there's been different dialogue on, on social media and, you know, different athletes speaking about the issue, um, you know, specifically for, for Canadian athletes, you know, what, what was their take on it? Or what were you feeling when you heard, you know, there would be some review and consideration on if the um, Olympics should happen or not? Yeah, well, the... Canadian Olympic Committee made the announcement that they would not send a team should the games go forward and they strongly strongly suggested that they postpone for one year to manage this crisis. Um, you know, I think Canadian athletes have a strong relationship with the Canadian Olympic Committee. I think Team Canada represents um, integrity in sport in every domain, in inclusive sport, in anti-doping, and now in, you know, global leadership amidst this crisis. And so um, when the IOC then made the decision uh, on Monday morning to postpone. It was, um, you know, a sigh of relief. Um, I think it was the right thing to do. Right now, um, what we're dealing with is way bigger than sport. And I know that sport will try play a huge role when it comes time to bring the world together and to heal and to celebrate humanity. But right now we need to take care of those closest to home um, and manage this crisis. So how are you, you know, you noted that the facilities are closed and we know that a lot of non-essential um, businesses have been, have been closed. You know, obviously that's a decision from the government, rightfully so. We should be in self-isolation. Um, what are you doing at home to continue to stay uh, fit or on your regimen as an athlete? Yeah, I mean, there's so many aspects of being an athlete that contributes to their success. I mean, there's the physical attributes. Um, the mental attributes, the technical and tactical skills. So, you know, I do have an exercise bike at home, so I'll be putting that to good work as I try to maintain my aerobic base. Um, there's lots of, you know, technical and tactical um, work that I can do and reviewing video and doing some self-assessments. And I have a number of calls, both with my whole IST team over the next couple of days and weeks to, to create an updated framework for what a training cycle for 2021 would look like. Um, to review some technical and tactical adjustments from the past year of competition. And so, you know, there's still lots of work to do. And there's so much that goes into being an Olympic athlete and, you know, even developing mental skills like meditation and, and reading and uh, gratitude journals. And so I'm just trying to really kind of sharpen all the tools in my tool toolkit. So when the time comes to get back into the wrestling room and eventually get back onto the mats at competition, um, I'll be a better all-around athlete because of it.
And your, I think you said the acronym was ISTT. Is that your wrestling team or the, the team of like, I guess your performance coaches and, and those people in those professions? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many acronyms in our <laughs> world. Yes. So um, the IST team is the integrated support team. And so for me, that's my technical wrestling coach, my physiologist, my strength and conditioning coach, um, my chiropractor, um, psychologist, physio, uh, nutritionist. And then we have a team lead as well that keeps us all together. So, you know, it's, it's truly a huge village out there. You know, I, I step on the mats as an individual athlete, but there is a team behind me that supports me individually as an athlete. And then there's my entire wrestling team that, you know, we train at the University of Calgary and it's a very diverse team of different ages and different experiences levels. But, you know, I, I walk into the room every single day and I'm pushed and challenged and supported by them. And so it's a true team effort. Um, I want to go a little bit back to your the beginning, humble beginnings of, of your career. How did you get into wrestling? Um, were you in varsity sports before? And just sort of what drew you to the wrestling community and wanting to, to be where you are now as an Olympian? Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> um, I started in grade nine. Actually, I was exposed to wrestling for the first time in in grade seven or eight, and it was it was a module in one of my gym classes. But girls were not allowed on the grade seven, eight wrestling team in Stittsville, where I grew up. Um, it was a boys only team. And so I wasn't able to try out. And so then in grade nine, they had a co-ed high school wrestling team. And so I convinced my best friend at the time to go to co-ed wrestling practice. Um, it's practice, it wasn't tryouts because there's no tryouts for wrestling. It's like if you can survive, you make the team. <laughs> and, uh, and so we spent that whole first year of grade nine just, you know, wrestling around and, and having fun. And, and I instantly fell in love with the sport. And then four years later, um, I wrestled all through high school. And then I made the tough decision to move across the country and, and come to the University of Calgary, where I train now, um, and enroll in the varsity wrestling program and, and take a kinesiology degree. And I actually didn't make the varsity team my first year. Um, it was, you know, I, I chose Calgary because it was the strongest women's wrestling program in Canada at the time. We had a number of Olympic coaches and Olympians. And I wanted to be challenged and pushed. And so I didn't make that varsity team my first year, but um, I went on to win three university titles and I graduated in the summer of 2012. And so it was the London Olympic Games and I had not made the team, but I had been asked to go as a training partner. And I went to the London Olympic Games. I got to be a fly on the wall. I got to <laughs> see behind the scenes and experience the whole approach to the games and the, the firsthand reactions and, and fears and performances of the athletes. I watched two Canadians win Olympic medals in wrestling, um, Carol Wynn and Tanya Rubik. And, and I came back from London and I was like, I'm going to be there in four years and I'm going to do everything I can to, to do it for Canada. So talk about, um, you know, making history. You are the second woman in Canada to get a gold medal in wrestling at the Olympics. You know, obviously you're seen as a trailblazer. Um, how, how do you sit with that? Because sometimes I talk to athletes and they're, they'll say, well, I'm not, you know, I, I, yeah, I worked hard and I got the medal, but they don't also see themselves sometimes as trailblazers. But how do you, how do you process all of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants in my sport. Um, women's wrestling is a very relatively young sport at the Olympic Games. Um, our first women's wrestling competition was at the 2004 Olympic Games, and Tanya Verbeek won a bronze medal for Canada. Um, and in 2008, the second Olympic Games for women's wrestling, Carol won gold. And so, you know, I'm just again, I'm just another, um, I'm another person walking on the path of the women that first demanded the opportunity to wrestle in the early 90s. And, you know, slowly um, carved out a space for women in this sport. And today, um, you know, we have a, a thriving sport community in wrestling. We have medals at, you know, the cadet and junior and senior world championships set up the Olympic Games. And, and I know with certainty that I will not be the last mm -hmm. to win an Olympic medal for Canada. So that's what's really important to me. 
So in terms of gender diversity, um, you know, She's for Sports, we held a, a panel on uh, female coaches across the sports spectrum. Um, can you talk a little bit about gender diversity in wrestling? You know, are we seeing uh, more women, um, you know, either training or applying for, for roles in coaching or being a part of that massive, uh, you know, um, performance team that you were talking about um, in wrestling? Or is that still an area where wrestling needs to kind of grow? You know, and I think that wrestling has been a trailblazer in this in Canada, as well as um, in the world. Um, Tanya Verbeek, you know, she's a three-time Olympic medalist, and she's also the first ever head coach of a national wrestling um, organization. And so she's leading the Canadian men's and women's team in their Olympic preparations. And she's just been such an amazing leader through a lot of turbulent times in our sport. Um, Carol Wynn, she's a regional training center coach. And so she stepped into a, a coaching position and, you know, there's more women across Canada that, you know, may not have won Olympic medals, but are incredible athletes and mentors and have stepped into coaching roles. And in fact, my first club wrestling coach was a young woman who, you know, had recently graduated from university and had moved to a city and, and was volunteering her time to coach wrestling. And she was my weight class. You know, she was, um, you know, just a couple years older than me, it seemed. And so right away, I saw her as a role model. And I saw that, you know, I never questioned my ability to be part of the sport of wrestling because of her presence in the room every single day. I like that sense of community and mentorship. So how are you using your platform and your voice and your talents to um, empower young girls and, and to get them thinking of if they are interested in wrestling, you know, they see someone like you, their representation is there. And, and you talked about the pathway of getting into where you are. Like, how are you encouraging them um, to take that journey in sports? Yeah, that's definitely one of my biggest motivations. Um, it's, you know, why I do what I do. It's why I'm so active on social media. It's why I'm so engaged in, in my communities. Um, you know, I do wrestling clinics and talks across Canada and I, I volunteer my time in these endeavors because, you know, you get so inundated with images of male professional athletes in the Canadian sport landscape. And, you know, Canadian women do kick butt. Um, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's often only recognized, you know, at the Olympic Games every four years or every two years, summer and winter. Um, and so, you know, but Olympic female athletes were training every single day, yet young women don't necessarily see that. Um, and it's even so much harder, I think, just, you know, if you add on the lens through which young girls feel like they need to perform whatever aspect of femininity they think is socially acceptable. And so again, there's like so many complex intersecting things and I just try to be authentic in who I am. Um, when I show up on the wrestling mat, I look a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean really business. <laughs> and so I really try to um, own, you know, all of these different aspects of who I am um, and promote them. Um, you know, I coach, I mentor young women, um, I'm involved in Fast and Female, which is an organization across Canada that holds events and, and provides, um, you know, funding opportunities for to keep girls in sport. And so, you know, I really just don't think that I can ever do enough to pay back what I've received through sport. And so it's my biggest um, passion and my biggest challenge that I'm trying to, to make happen today. No, I love what you said about, um, you know, representing yourself, um, showing yourself in different ways, you know, when you're on the mat and you're competing, when you're on, um, you know, your social channels, interacting with other communities, I think sometimes there is this stereotype that an athlete or a woman that works in sport is supposed to look one way or supposed to be in one box. And that's not really accurate. I feel like we need to normalize these different voices and these different people and these great women in sports. And that's what we're trying to do with Shoes for Sports. So I'm really glad that you noted that. Yeah, I mean, it's a challenge and it's a struggle, I think, every single day. And so, you know, again, I'm just going to go women like yourself that are showing <laughs> up and, and creating this platform. It's it's incredibly inspiring for me. And I have so many stories of, you know, the type of issues that women deal with. Like I remember being at a TIFF event in 2016 after I had competed in the games and myself and a male athlete who were both Olympic medalists showed up to the event and, and I had read to the dress and I was feeling awesome and we were walking around this party with our gold medals and you know somebody was like oh wow recognized this male athlete right away and was fondling over his medal and then he turns to me and he's like oh well whose medal is that 
And I was just like, let's go outside, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> no. Yeah. We I hear you. No. We need to normalize the, the representation, the stories. They need to be on traditional media sites. Um, is there anything else you want to share with our Shoes for Sports community that I didn't touch on or things that you're working on or what's next with you as we all try to get, uh, you know, on the other side of this health crisis? You know, I think about many young athletes, um, many young Olympic athletes um, that are struggling because they feel like their seasons have been cut short. And I guess I want to remind all of the athletes out there, no matter what their goals were in 2020, um, you know, first of all, the hard work that you've done, it doesn't go away. It's, it's a accumulation of hard work and it'll still be there when the gyms open up and when the playing fields are once again filled with athletes playing sports, um, you'll be stronger because of this. And as well, I think that, you know, let's have some delusional optimism and we will get through this. And uh, for the Olympians, it's just one more year to keep training um, to get even better. And, you know, when I think about it, it's dangerous to think how good I could be in one year's time. So I'm excited for that. Um, you know, it's, it's tough times, but I think women thrive in uncertainty and thrive in these moments. And so I'm just so proud of all the female leaders that are stepping up and uh, showcasing the great work that it, and what it is to be Canadian. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you or learn a little bit more about, you know, your training or some content about rest women and wrestling, how could they find you on social or, you know, let us know what your website is. Yeah, sure. They can connect with me on Instagram. It's at E Weebs, E W E E B Z. Um, I don't know. I chose that. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> Um, and then on Twitter, just Eric Weeb, LinkedIn, Eric Weeb, and you can follow me on Facebook as well as my website, ericaweeb.ca. So, you know, send me a message. You know, I actually have been, I put up on my Instagram that any young athletes that, you know, are looking for mental strategies to cope with this moment, you know, I've, I've had some calls with young athletes across Canada. And so, um, you know, everyone's looking to fill their time. So I thought, you know, why not mentor some young athletes? So that's what I'm doing. So please reach out and, uh, and I'm always trying to help out. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and your uh, thoughts on everything that's been happening with athletes in the Olympics and also, you know, your journey and what you're trying to do to reach out to, uh, you know, the next generation or other people who want to get into um, high performance sports, wrestling um, at the level that you're at and showing women and young girls that they can do it too. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. It's always great to be part of something. <laughs>